guys, Ellen Woodbridge here, Independent Stampin' Up! Demonstrator for Australia. And today I wanted to welcome you to the February Christmas Stampathon 2021. And this month we are playing with all things embossing. So we're looking at heat embossing with embossing powders. Uh, you may like to use some dyes that emboss or some embossing folders. Um, you can use a good old stylus um, in a mask or you can even use your score tool in your trimmer. For my cards for this month, so we're asking you to make four cards. I've actually, I think I'm making 12 um, to get ahead on my Christmas list, which is huge at the moment. Being a demonstrator, I do seem to send them to a lot of people who help me throughout the year. I'm using silver embossing powder. I'm using the poinsettia dies, which also have an embossed die on them so you can cut and emboss at the same time um, i have also used and i'll show you here i've also used the nested label dies and this also has an embossing detail piercing detail very similar in them so i've used that and two stamp sets the birch silver heat embossed on the background and the sentiment from a ranger wreath which is a merry christmas in the stitched nested labels so today i've done a lot of the pre-work i've done a lot of the die cutting and i've embossed my background but i am going to show you some heat embossing um, of the sentiment label and i'm also going to show you how i colored my poinsettia pieces to bring them to life against this card so let's get moving along i'm going to pop these things out of the way for the moment so i am playing predominantly with the pearlescent paper so that is available in the mini catalog which is the january to june mini catalog sorry just looking for my pieces here and it is beautiful and i did have a titch of trouble and i'll explain why um actually coloring it and the reason is it's not porous paper so i've already pre-colored some I had some troubles popping on my pearls at the end of the day and that was because I had to basically wait a really long time for the um, ink to dry because it does just sit on top of the flowers. It would be good if I could find all my flowers but I'm missing. No, that's one, that's one. So I'm showing you the leaves and we will leave our vellum ones here, but they are all embossed. The, the vellum ones are a little bit more subtle with their embossing, but there is definitely texture there. So for our colouring, we will be using our blending brushes in Real Red and Old Olive. As you can see, from my sample card the colors become very very subtle on the paper why just a property of the paper it isn't white it does have that pearlescent um, factor in the paper and it just oops helps if I hold it with my finger and you can see here it is definitely old olive ink and it just sits on top we just need to allow that to dry so I've colored the whole bit of uh, the whole leaf then I'm going in and I'm pouncing just to get a bit more concentrated color otherwise it does look very um, soft sea foam so I loved I could this month 
combine two of the fun embossing features into my cards but over on the Facebook group when you share your cards you only need to show one way of embossing if you want to show more than one way go for it but we're only asking you to explore one way I'm just going to pop this out of the way because I don't need it and I'm going to grab our real red and by embossing on it I feel like we also intensify the detail of the embossing so this one just going to go in the middle like that do a titch of pouncing you can see how much it does dry back but I'm totally okay with that but it does take on a bit more of a pink property um, compared to the real red but do you know what it's the fun of playing with new papers that you get different results so we have nicely intensified our embossed pieces here I'm going to pop this piece here and just pop these off to the side they won't be dry by the time I am putting together my card but that's okay so next I'm going to use my Stamparabas now I have done all my stamping with the Stamparabas so what I have done to make it really really easy to stamp the background let's see if I can open this up I have adhered the background stamp to the base of my Stamparatus. Now it doesn't matter where you put it and then I inked it up with my Versamark ink because I embossed and it's a nice sticky ink. Then all I did was pop my piece of paper on, closed it, applied pressure and I did it this way so I could see where I was putting the piece of paper where if I was doing a stamp on the lid and stamping onto the paper I wouldn't quite be sure if I was getting it straight or in the right place uh, because I wouldn't want my piece of paper to be butt up against the edge uh, because I wanted to grab the details of the stamp on both edges of the paper so now that I've shown you that I'll pull this off and I have made up a jig and I will remove this plate because we no longer need it but with the jig I have popped it into the corner and I have taken one of my stitch nested labels pieces popped it in the empty space so it makes oh, I've popped this the wrong way around I need to put my jig sideways normally I do mark my jigs and I also need my magnet which just hides in the storage at the bottom okay now that that piece of paper is nice and secure not going anywhere i'm going to pop this on my stamp i have pre-lined up to be fairly do you know what i have my jig upside down this is why we test all the things before we ink things that is better so much better you can see the stamps in the middle i won't be editing out my mistakes because i like people to see the little wrong things i do and how to either avoid it or fix it okay now pop this in right here and i will also need my reverse tweezers but I can see them so that should be great now this is a clear ink so not do you know what else I forgot 
I forgot my stamping mat. I'm going through all the forgettings tonight. So this is the foam mat. When you buy the Stamparatus, it's just a plain black mat. I did purchase the additional mat, uh, which has a grid line on it. And I find the grid line incredibly helpful. And it's great that you can just wipe it off. Okay, take three, everyone. We will get there with this. My word. I'm not even running late or anything. Okay, give that some nice pressure. And I'm going to pick this up. You can use either normal tweezers, but with my hands being the way that they are, I prefer, prefer reverse tweezers. Okay, we don't need the Stamparatus anymore, but I do need my scrap piece of paper and I need our embossing powder. I'm running very low after making these 12 cards it may not look like I'm running low but there used to be a whole lot more in this pot so I just pour it over tap it back into the pot I do have a few stray pieces not particularly worried about it because of the detail in the background so the detail in the background is that beautiful birch wood grain and it does show up very well that just how grainy it is now lid back on and just while i'm here i've just got a few stray bits of powder that i don't want to melt so now we're going to melt with our heat tool. This is the Stampin' Up! heat tool. It has two settings. Setting one is for ink dry, which I could actually use to dry the ink on our, um, on our pearlescent paper. But what we're doing, hopefully this is warm enough. We're just going to, by the magic of heat, watch that embossing powder melt. And that, if I can, turning it off helps. And that is our sentiment piece done. I'm going to leave that to dry and I'm going to start assembling my pre-inked flowers now I'm going to break my own cardinal rule here which is using wet glue with vellum now that is because I want to curl and I should have done this before I put on the glue but we're gonna live very dangerously now you can do this with your bone folder or you can, like me, just use your thumbnail. Now that glue will stay wet long enough for me to curl these. Now I know I have another set of um, another set of leaves. That I'm just going to have to look for in a second so we can assemble this flower. Okay, so I want to offset the petals. Now I'm just going to hold that there for a titch and I will find. Ah, I found my pre inked leaves. Win score. They were hiding inside the card where I was storing them. Okay, 
just do this last one and then we can add our pearls if you wanted to to match in with the silver you could color the pearls uh, with versamark and use silver embossing powder or you could color them with our stamp and lens markers i liked them uh, the pearl color because i thought that tied in really well with the pearlescent paper so how many of you and i'd love for you to tell me in the comments here on my video how many of you have played along with our christmas stampathon or are at least a part of our facebook group because even if you're not playing along with the challenges and if you are playing along you go into the draw uh, for a random a random card so one of these cards will be set aside um, to be sent out at the end of february to one of our very lucky participants so pop that there, then I'm just going to pop a dab of glue on the back of my leaves. Now this is the, this is the larger one, which I am popping at the bottom. And I like that I'm using wet glue. It just gives me a titch of wiggle room. Now, I'm not curling the leaves. I think it's more important that the flower is curled. And even with the curling, you can still see the uh, pattern in those, uh, in the petals and the leaves. Okay, I am now finished with this glue. I'm going to grab my pearls. And we're just going to pop a cluster of three on our card using our Take Your Pick tool. Now this has um, like blue tack at the end. So what I can do is pick up the embellishment on its side and then just place it perfectly onto... Whoop, I'll grab that in a second... Okay, I didn't quite want it to stick there, but we will tell it exactly who's boss. Great, and then I just give them a firm push down. Now, when I did this on wet ink, they slid everywhere and I ended up having to use Tombow, which did kind of make the ink run but when i let all the ink dry it worked perfectly so next we're just going to grab a few two dimensionals to attach our sentiment and then that is our card done there is a little bit of work in the heat embossing but i promise you that it is worth it just the shimmer and the shine that the pearlescent paper and the embossing uh, gives is beautiful. And I always think that heat embossing especially always gives a classy look and texture just adds that extra something to a card. So I like to, I like embossing because it does quite easily Add that texture whether it's a folder or you use an embossing die and it just it adds something to the card I can never quite put my finger on it but I'm always very happy when I use an embossing folder or an embossed feature on my card so I'll tilt this in the light so you can hopefully see the shimmer and the shine over on the Facebook group and my blog, I will share uh, close-up photos as well as uh, photos with the colours that I've used. But I've used Old Olive, Real Red, 
the poinsettia dies, the birch stamp set, the arranger wreath stamp set, and the stitched nested dies. So I do hope you pop along to our friendly Facebook group full of people from all around the world who want to get ahead on their Christmas cards. You don't have to be crazy like me and have made, I think I've made 11 so far. I need to dry those other flowers to finish my 12th. But you don't have to be crazy like me. We do ask that you just make four and share them in the group. Thank you so much for joining me today. And I will see you over in the group and next month for our next challenge. Bye.